This is a demonstration of a simple program using the first of the three microcodes. Now, as mentioned, the first two are aimed at novices, so I'll use number one, which I've called Toy A. Now, I didn't invent this. It's based on an imaginary computer called Toy, used by Princeton University in the USA for teaching computing to students. The details are all available on the internet, I'll put some links in the description. They use different variants of TOY to demonstrate different programming techniques. So Plasma supports the two most common ones I found. I've called them TOY A and TOY B. Here's the full list of instructions for TOY A. And you can see there are 16 different functions. Add, subtract, load, store, etc. Now instructions are all 16 bits long. So now you know all about hex from the previous video, you'll know that 16 bits can be represented by four hex digits. And column one in this table shows how these four digits are used. The first digit is always the function number. You can see it goes from naught to F, which gives us the 16 functions. The next digits represent the qualifiers or operands to the function and how these are structured depends on the function. We'll just look at a few that we're going to use for our example program. Now the HALT instruction is easy. The first digit is zero, but it has no operands. So digits two, three, and four can be anything. You can use this to terminate your program and the HALT light up here will turn on when a HALT instruction is encountered. The next few instructions have a similar format. They all perform some operation, add or subtract and so on, on two source work registers and store the result into a destination work register. Now we saw the work registers earlier, the registers R0, R1, R2, everything up to RF. Now the D digit represents the destination register and the S and T digits represent the source registers. And there are 16 work registers. And how many bits do you need to specify 16 values? Well, you're right, it's four bits or one nibble. That's why this instruction set is so easy to get your head round. The nibbles refer to one of 16 different items. So an add instruction is a one followed by the register for the result, followed by the two registers which are to be added together. So if I wanted to add the contents of registers 7 and 8 and store the results into register 9, the instruction would be 1, 9, 7, 8. If I wanted the answer to go into register E instead, the instruction would be 1, E, 7, 8. I note the three registers do not have to be different. For example, what would 1577 do? Well, it would add the contents of register 7 to the contents of register 7. In other words, multiply it by 2 and store the result into register 5. How about 1555? Well, that would add register 5 to register 5 and store the result back into register 5. And if you repeated this instruction, register 5 would double each time. Now this three register format is used for instructions 1 to 6. The next ones use slightly different formats. A load address, which is one we're going to use, uses the first two nibbles as before. The first is the function, 7, and the second is the destination register. This time though, the third and fourth nibbles are used as an 8-bit number, a byte. And this is the number to be loaded into the destination register. So to load hex 34 into register 2, the instruction is 7234. And to load hex FE, into register A, the instruction is 
7AFE. OK, so now we're ready to try some code. The previous video showed how to increment a register, in this case PC, manually by using the switches. So let's try writing a program to increment a work register automatically. And normally you would write down the program steps and only load them into the computer when you're finished. But it's a fairly basic program, so I'm going to load the instructions on the fly. The first thing to notice is there's no increment instruction. This is something you'll come across a lot in programming, and part of the skill is breaking down your requirements into the limited functions available. And the closest instruction to what we want is an add, but as you've seen, it only adds register contents together. And we haven't loaded the registers with anything yet. They are either random when you switch on, or zero after you press the reset switch. Now if we could load a 1 into a register, we could then use the add instruction to add this to another register, giving us the increment function we need. And before we do anything on here, I need to load microcode 1. OK. So let's use register 3 to hold the value of 1. And we'll use the load address instruction to load hex value 0, 01 into register 3. So if we look at the table, the instruction we want is 7301. Okay, so how do we load that into the computer? First, we confirm the load target register is the instruction register. The target register for loading values is shown by the red light next to each register. Only one can be lit at any one time and we can change it by using this switch. Okay, next we set the instruction you want onto the load switches. That's this set of 32 switches here. Now in our case we only want 16 because the register is 16 bits wide. So we use the right hand end. Right, we want 7, 3, 0, 1. And now we press load. And you'll see the value 7301 is in the instruction register and it will be in store. The address in store will be whatever is shown on the program counter, which is 0. So address 0 in the store will have this value. In fact, if you remember from our first video, these switches allow you to inspect any address in store and they're all off at the moment, so it's currently looking at address 0, and that's why this value is the same as this value. If I look at address 1, this changes. OK, that's one instruction done. Let's assume register 5, this one here, is going to be the register to be incremented. So we'll use the add instruction with register 5 as the destination, and registers 3 and 5 as the source. Now the instruction we want now is a 1535 which says add register 3 to register 5 and store the result into register 5. So let's load this into store. We want 1, 3, no oh, sorry, 1, 5, that's 4 and 1, 5, 3, now before we load it, just note the program counter is address 0, which holds our first instruction. We don't want to overwrite that, so we need to increment the program counter. That's what this button's for. Increment PC. We're on address 1, and now we can load the value. Now if we want to repeatedly increment, we need to repeat this instruction. So let's add a few more. 
we increment PC on address 2 and load. The value hasn't changed, so we'll load it again. Ink PC, load, and we can keep doing that as often as we want. Now you'll notice that incrementing PC is going to be needed after loading each instruction. So to make it easier, there's another switch called load and increment, which does exactly that. It loads the value from the load switches and increments PC automatically, ready for the next one. So let's use that one. Load ink, load ink. You can see PC going up each time. I don't know how many that is, but we'll leave it at that. Just note, whenever you use the load and increment, the instruction is always the contents of this address. So once PC has been incremented, this instruction will be the old contents of this address. So it won't be the instruction that you're entering, it will be the one that's in memory. So to finish our program, we'll add a halt instruction. You cannot guarantee what the store contents are unless you've written the program to explicitly clear it. So if you don't add a halt, the machine will blindly carry on obeying random instructions. Now the halt instruction from the table is a zero followed by anything. So let's use all four zeros as it stands out more clearly. So we can either set all zeros on the load bank here and press load, or you can just use the clear switch. This switch here is down for load, up for clear. So we just make sure PC is the value we want and we press clear. OK, the program's loaded. And we can inspect it using the ink deck PC switch. So if we press reset, we'll go back to address zero. And we can see the first instruction there, 7301, which was our load, if you remember. We we'll increment PC. And the second instruction is a 1535, which was our add. Next instruction is the same, next instruction is the same. Keep going. And there's the last instruction, which was a halt. We're not obeying the instructions, we're just looking at them by altering the value in PC. Reset to the start. Right, now we can run the program. Now, when you're not sure about a new program, you could take it steady and single step it. The button here called step will run through the program one instruction at a time. So let's try it. We're on address zero. That's the instruction which says load register three with a value one. Here's register three at the moment, nothing in it. If we do step, it's now loaded register three with the value one. PC has gone on to the next address, and this is the instruction which is about to be obeyed. And we know this is the uh, 1535 instruction, which says add register 3 to register 5 and store the result in register 5. So we'll do another step. There we go, register 5 is now 1. The instruction is the same. If we do it again, it will add register 3 to register 5, which is now 1, so it will store 2 in register 5. And there it is. So each time we obey an instruction, it will add 1 to register 5, which is the increment that we were after right at the beginning. So it's incrementing register 5 on every tick. And eventually, we'll hit the halt instruction, There we go, the halt light has come on. Now we can reset and run it at full speed. See how long it takes to go through that program. And there we are. There's another option on here, which you saw earlier. There's a slow and a medium speed switch. So let's try running it at slow speed. There we go, you can see it counting now. Done. Okay, so that concludes the very first program. I'm sure you're all screaming at me to use a jump instruction because putting in repeated instructions like that is a bit tedious. 
what happens if you wanted to do say 100 increments. So we'll look at the jump instruction next. Okay, thanks for watching.